nineteen seventeen came our country's first test in worldwide conflict the older weapons greatly improved were there for our armies among them new heavier tools of war but something unforeseen was happening although the truck replaced the horse range and power were costing mobility the enemy too was finding that while he could hurl shells distances never before dreamed of the giant cannon mounted on flat cars must be restricted to the rails that carried it While conventional artillery was accounting for 70% of battle casualties, two new sources of firepower entered the scene. The first of these came about through man's successful efforts to achieve flight. As early as 1909, the Army had bought its first plane. Soon, there was an Army air service under direction of the Chief Signal Officer. Reconnaissance and observation were the airplane's only roles, but soon it became apparent that it could act as a flying platform to carry firepower directly to the enemy. In short, it gave artillery new mobility, flexibility, and range. The other innovation that was to reshape the techniques of war was the tank. This mobile armored juggernaut could carry its fire directly to the enemy where his small arms would be ineffectual, then move out of range of retaliatory weapons. That new extension of the clenched fist had its origins in antiquity. Domestication of the horse and invention of the wheel had inspired its possibilities. Ancient Assyria had gained its brief ascendancy through the terrifying, striking force of the first chariots. Centuries later, elephants would give Hannibal the Great the same combination of striking power, armor, mobility, and demoralizing effect. By the Middle Ages, individual